cat interviews at uber confluent indeed and many many more companies i have seen it all after countless hours on the other side of the table i know exactly what top companies are looking for especially in nld in this course i'll share the insider blueprints what to focus on especially key design patterns how much multi threading very important counter question traps and how to tackle them confidently this course is structured practical and tailored on what companies are looking for right now let's get you into ready right now so now let's coming on to the last design pattern in our behavioral series it is memento design pattern now memento just your memory man memory keeper is your corresponding memento let's see with an example if you have a text editor and you are doing some changes right now you have a task to hit the undo back now you will go to a previous state so how you will maintain that again if you go with the normal logic you know i i didn't have to simply maintain whatever i wrote and then you know in my main code itself i just do that backup thingy it can become very cluttered and you will see that cluttered code also but usually and one of the best case things which you should do again i will tell one more reason apart from cluttered which is very important in case you know you actually having any interview or something but apart from cluttered there is one more thing but the main thing is that you rather should store a snapshot of things and again you can restore that snapshot back whenever you need it so what was the other thing other thing is primarily you see that we have usually multi thread ar ar architectures you know there are multiple threads working you know differently and all that stuff now if one thread undoes the state other thread also tries to do that same thing but again they will have conflicts so it is always recommended that you store the copy of the thing whichever you want to undo so that everyone can actually work independently that is one of the biggest reasons why you end up making a snapshot or a copy or an object rather than just maintaining one source of truth and you know undoing back here itself again if you will not maintain the corresponding copy again usually people end up maintaining a deep copy for it but you if you don't maintain that everyone have will have you know every, everyone will do the corresponding change you will have to apply logs here things will become very slow and again you are literally screwed up now how to do about memento memento says that you know i will keep that as an external object again like externalize that object's internal state which means that i will keep that as an external object whatever the internal state is and i can just restore that specific state whenever i want let's see how so basically memento says okay the state of an object i can go back to it whenever i want later on and imagine i am typing it i will do some changes i will undo my mistake and i will revert back to the previous state and if i handle it manually let's see how it looks like you know bad piece of code so obviously i will have text editor where i will write some text if i undo it i will go on to a previous state again to implement a bad code there can be numerous ways again there can be numerous ways to implement a bad code for everyone the bad code is something different right so it's a tradition you know normal code which you must have written in a dsa format in that you pass in a previous state and then you will simply undo which means revert back to that state and you know set to that state so to implement that what you must have done is that you will have a editor then you will ask for a show text then you will maintain the backup by yourself again you can right now take a stack also here multiple things you, you can do but you will maintain a backup here and then you will set the backup by yourself so you will set the text by yourself and then you will just simply call show text but whenever you want to undo you will simply go and undo with that specific backup that is the thing that you are maintaining a backup by yourself and also at the same time you're maintaining that as a you know individually again it can literally be very very long and uh, you know maybe many operations are happening and then can be multiple threads as well multiple people multiple people are using it there can be literally many stuff which can actually go wrong here with single source of truth being maintained actually here in your main code how to go about this obviously the biggest issue is a lot of duplication will happen many people will do the same thing as you know that you are implementing a backup logic many people will repeat the backup logic same backup logic and again if you think i and i will maintain that backup logic somewhere you know i will make a corresponding class and in that class i will actually keep that backup logic and uh, i'll just do that still manually still the same issue will come up if there are multiple people multiple threads accessing at the same time 
they will try to change the state at the same time making it in a corrupted state to get rid of that state you will have to apply a lock here and this making the program slow so you saw that this also will actually end up happening so let's do one thing let's actually uh, you know get up the backup logic somewhere as momento or i'll just say okay i'll just take the store the snapshot as a momento but i saw why i'm doing it because obviously there will be some tangling happening why tangling you will see a simple example if i have another backup you know multi level backup i'm having i'm having obviously i will have to somehow edit my text editor itself and that can make the code very messy and ugly okay so you see we saw that we have a scattered backup logic it's it can become very messy and unmanageable as things are going and it's very hard to maintain as well so what to do simply keep our text editor which is the originator of our corresponding text momento will store the corresponding snapshot you know momento is a snapshot imagine snapshot of something is a momento i'll to make a snapshot you know whenever someone asks click a picture i'll click a picture give him a new picture now again as the process goes away if aap if anyone asks click click a picture i will click a picture and give him a new picture i will not so this old picture and this new picture are literally separate and that is the benefit that every state is literally separate here so let's move on forward now obviously if i have a snapshot if i have a text editor i will need someone who will manage this snapshot right that's the reason i will take a caretaker or you know a history manager which will manage the specific momento let's see how so firstly we will have text editor which is a simple job you know just corresponding set the text which i have get the text that's a simple job of a text editor now obviously a text editor should make sure that whenever i call a save he can save or make a new momento of the current text whatever you are having so whatever the text he is having i'll make a new momento or a new snapshot of it and then save it or i should say i will simply return it and this is what i can store where this store this will be stored via my history manager so history manager many manages snapshots of what of my corresponding text which came up from my text editor so i'll come back and i'll say okay let's say if i click on snapshot like save so it will make a new snapshot again make sure there is a thing a new snapshot be, is being created and is being returned and again we will see later on also that this is being saved via my history manager and again if i if i want to restore i will simply ask what is the current momento and then get the corresponding text obviously i have to pass the corresponding momento which i am looking for to get the value out now comes the main part momento momento says okay momento can be literally anything it's a snapshot snapshot of what right now i'm saying snapshot of string you can literally keep object can be anything obviously this is primarily used in games you know your chess game your tic tac toe game literally any game you play you are using momento in that internally so obviously because again in games you have that you know um, undo state reverse state backup state all that stuff which you have this is this this helps to be done with the help of momento you 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 usually see that okay whenever you exit a game or you know whenever you you pass a checkpoint you are your state is saved that is the reason your uh, momento is actually happening inside it now coming on back it can literally store anything right now i have stored corresponding text here and momento will say okay momento will get a corresponding text and make a text and then that's a simple get text which i can use let's say if i am if if, if uh, i want to get the get the corresponding thing which is stored inside the momento i can have it as two string as well it's shorty up to your business use case comes the main one main one is that history editor which is my manager so he will say okay i'll maintain a history it it can be stack of momento again it can literally be anything right now i just put up as a undo feature so i put up a stack you can keep anything right now you just have main task of maintaining or storing these mementos with you which is correspondingly history so whenever someone says you know push a new memento a new memento came up came up just push it i just push it which means my editor history it will store these mementos or it will track these mementos if i want to undo things back i will simply get things out pop things out and that's how i can simply use my editor history which is you know my manager who will actually be managing to or you 
to who will actually be storing all these things. So now you realize that you have an editor, which is the actual editor here. Now you have a momento, which is a snapshot object, which will be made for a specific text editor. And then there's a, a manager who will manage this momento and keep a store, like keep a record of it. Let's see the main code. Obviously, I will have an editor and I will have a history manager. So this is my corresponding editor and a history manager. Now, obviously, let's say I did a uh, firstly, I just put one text, hello. Then I can simply print what is inside my editor right now. Then let's say I want the things to be saved right now. So how, how I will do it? I'll ask my editor to save the current state. So whatever the current state is there, he will save it. Save as a form of a, as a form of a memento. And then this, I should simply push it in my corresponding stack. So whenever I call a push, so what will happen? It will go and say that a push is being called for this momento. So simply in your existing set of records that you have, which is a stack right now, just add this one as well. So I'll simply add the current one as well. Again, the data structure can be literally anything, but it's totally up to you. Now, let's say you added another text. Now, although right, right now you will see that I am just setting the text right now, right? You can add the text as well, which means that, hello, I've already added. Let's say if I add a word. So what can happen that if I just have another function named add text, so it will go up and it will say, okay, I have an add text, which will say that I have rather a string builder and then I will simply append a new incoming string. That's how I can uh, manage it or I can actually do, you know, uh, make it more uh, useful. Right now, the only case why I did a set is because I want to keep it short and simple and want to focus more on momento. Now, as I did a set text primarily, we just kind of are appending a word, which is a new word which came in. So what, what will happen now? Now I will say again, save. So this will again make a momento on top of my hello world and then we'll push that inside my stack. So what happened? You made a momento of hello, then you made a momento of hello world and saved it in your stack. Now, next time, let's say I call, uh, you know, editor.getText. So what will happen? Your editor will go and call the corresponding getText function. Editor is your simple text editor, and I will go and call what is a current text, which I, whatever I have. So it will simply be right now. It will be simply storing the current text, which is hello world. This is not, this hasn't, sorry, yeah, this one, this hasn't touched your stack yet. So again, no worries. Now comes the fun part. I will ask the previous state from my history, which is my manager. From my manager, I will ask for the previous state and I'll ask, bro, what is the previous state? Can you please tell me? He will say the previous state is, okay. He will go in the pop function for it. Pop will say, okay, if it's not empty, just get out the first thing and just get it, return that. So he will return me the object for hello world. And let's say this is gone. So I have now got the hello world object. This is again, this is the momentum object which I've got. Now it's up to me, whatever I want to do. I have got the previous state. I can simply do anything for the, with it. I can restore that state, previous state, or I can do anything with that previous state now. So if I go back to the editor function, I will simply see that if I call the restore with the momento, which is now hello world in this case, I will set the current text with the momentos text, which is the hello world. So what happens here? That I will corresponding get the current text. Now again, uh, if you want to again get the previous text, so now this is gone, hello world is gone. Now you want to get the hello. Again, do the undo operation and you can simply get the new text as well. So this is how your momento works. Again, the entire essence of momento is that the corresponding state is being stored as an object and that too as a new object every time. So that the things are not bottlenecked and also makes more clean. They, it, it makes things more clean. Obviously, let's say if you want to add a redo feature or any other detailed feature which you have, you can simply add it. Now again, obviously there's one caveat here that this code is not how you should actually write a production code. The entire essence of showing this code is just so that we show the redo feature. But obviously you see that any manager, as soon as a new functionality comes in, the entire thing is changing, which means all the functions are changing, which is not a good practice as we have seen earlier as well. But the entire essence of this example is just to show you the momento feature. Right? But with the help of other design patterns, which we have learned previously, we can make it much more modular and scalable. Again, right now this is not scalable and this violates open course principle. But again, let's come on back to the open. Oh, let's come, let's come on back to the momentum. So momentum says, okay, now we can have a redo stack of momentum. 
So whenever I call the save state, I will just you know simply clear the redo because there is no redo available now. If I call uh, undo, obviously I need to say that uh, I will have something to redo now because I am doing undo. If I do a redo, I will have something to undo now because I am doing a redo. This is the only corresponding change which I can actually simply incorporate in my uh, in my corresponding stack. Now obviously here also I will correspondingly stay store the corresponding state whichever I have. Cool. And again, this is very easy to retry that, re retry that specific snapshot. So Momentus simply says I will store the snapshot. And again, the logic remains more or less same. I'll get the previous state and I'll, I can simply call the undo and the redo functionalities here. And with that said, you will have your uh, text editor, which will say, okay, I you can simply create a Momento out of my text editor. And I can have a, you know, my manager, history manager, which will manage or store all these Momentos with me. So what did you learn from this? You learned that uh, I can encapsulate a specific state into, you know, Momento or a snapshot. I will have literally a lot of functionalities, primarily involving undo functionality, which is very highly used in the industry. But al along with it, I can have multiple, multiple other functionalities as well. Now, concerns are very separate, which means that my text editor doesn't need to handle any of the undo functionality, any, any, any of that sort. My manager will be there, which will handle what? Handle a Momento. And momentum will be there, which will make sure that, okay, I'm the object which needs to be maintained by everyone else. And again, my recovery is literally effortless. Obviously, one of the most used use cases is games. Any game, whatever you think of, especially right now, again, whatever you learn or, you know, whatever you study in this specific uh, LLD, which is this one, you will see mostly are not multi-threaded. Multi-threading we are covering later on in the future. But if it's not multi-threading, that doesn't matter as such. If you, you know, maintain a new state every time, new, 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 all that stuff. But again, you see that mostly in real life scenarios, you end up having multi-threading. And with that, just for the all threads, not to, you know, um, like uh, basically affect each other. It's usually good that you maintain corresponding copies and everyone can individually work on their own copies and own states, or I should say own snapshots. And again, you can have data recovery, you can have communication management, you can have financial transactions. So again, these all are simply just to give examples, but primarily this is very highly used in an actual games itself. Again, whenever you want to maintain a backup anywhere in multi-threaded programs, you will have to use it. But still, it's a good practice just to maintain a corresponding state. So what we realized that we have a personal time, personal time machine for us or for our objects. And I store the corresponding snapshots at a specific point in time. And the best part is I can roll back whenever I need, whatever I need, without even considering, without even catering anyone else or even any other specific person, thread or anyone. With that, you will have your memento dead button. Cool. I hope you guys liked it. Make sure that we hit the like target of two clicks. And as I mentioned, in behavioral design pattern, only these three are important. Rest are not important. And also on top of it, the order of importance is like this, you know, most, 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 less, 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 like, less. so the order itself, how this course is structured is very important. So make sure that you cover mostly above things. Below things are not that important for you to cover for any upcoming interview. Bye-bye. Take care.